Yes. Hi, Justin. Hi, Carla. Good to see you. You know, the last time we talked was for Gook, with, and that's been a minute. But it's been a minute, yeah. It's been a minute, but I'm so proud of you because I knew then you. that you were going to like tear it up. And I think I told you then, too. <laughs> I knew you were going to do some great things. And what I really love is the fact that you're telling this story from a Korean American point of view. And I'm glad that it's you telling the story as opposed to someone else. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I appreciate, yeah, I, do. I appreciate you for that. I appreciate you taking pride in the importance <laughs> of, of telling stories from a Korean perspective. So thank you. Thank you for that. You. Um, what was it like to find out about all of these people that thought that they were American citizens and found out that they had to be deported? And, and what made you feel so strongly that you wanted to share this story with the masses? Yeah, I was uh, absolutely shocked. You know, I'm friends with a lot of adoptees and um, I just couldn't believe that you could be brought to this country as a child and had no stay in that in that choice. And then, um, you know, for for, you know, 30, you know, 20, 30 years to pass and find out that that some loophole in paperwork doesn't make you an American, even though you're adopted by American citizens. I just don't think it's right. Um you know, I, I, I feel that um, the government should take care of children that come and, and you know, th- there's no way as a child you can know that you have to do go through this process of, of, you know, this proper way of naturalizing yourself. I think it should be automatic. And there is a Child Citizenship Act of 2000 that automatically grants citizenship, but it's not retroactive before 2000. I, I don't know what that doesn't make sense to me either. Yes, bananas. And let's talk about this tattoo artist situation. How much did you know about tattooing before you started doing the film? You know, I mean, uh, you know, I had a handful of tattoos. Um, I, uh, I had one. I had a tattoo on my left side that I got when I was like 17, 18. And I, I didn't really care about it anyway. So I was going to get covered up. So I went and got a full new chest piece. And it was I just had him do the outline and stop. So it looked really like half done. But, you know, I asked him tons of questions and then I did my own research and, you know, um, learned how to, 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 to hold a tattoo gun, how it worked. Um, but, uh, you know, I mean, you know, also like the, the, the dude, uh, Ace B, um, that plays my friend in the film, uh, he plays Q. He also, you know, is a tattoo artist and, you know, um, you know, he told me, you know, he just made sure that I, I got, got everything right. Oh, well, you did get everything right, including the casting of Sydney and Lynn Dunfam, because they were fabulous, mm. fabulous, fabulous. Mm. I appreciate you so much for that. That is my time. Oh, I wish I could talk to you longer. But good luck with the film. I loved it. I boo hoo 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 hoo. That last moment, <laughs> honey, that last moment wore me the hell out. And I'm not going to say what it is because I won't ruin it. But that last moment, it wore me down to a frazzle. So that means you are a uh, Hi, tabulous filmmaker. Thank you. Thank you so much, Carla. I appreciate you. Yeah, dude, I got you. All right, I'll see you next time.